D-Day is coming. The Fed could be about to make a decision that either brings about a recession or obliterate the banking system. The good part is this will clear the way for a bull market. Bitcoin has been running up, but is its time being seen as a hedge against the banking system over? And what three coins have potential 100x plus potential? All of this and more coming up in today's video in three minutes. Three, two, one. Pressure pushing down on the Fed, pushing down on the banks, their world has broke. Would you like to learn about D-Day, which is tomorrow? What impending doom is facing the banking and financial market sector? And is Bitcoin safe from it? Bitcoin has been being seen as a hedge by retail investors and it's been reported in the news that this is the saviour to the banking system, to the financial crises like we had in the recession of 2008. But is that real? Is that perception real? Or are we actually going to be going down? We are going to be discussing that in today's video. And also, three cryptocurrencies with explosive 100x potential plus 100x plus potential. All of that and more coming up in today's video. Here with me, the Superman, your superhero, of cryptocurrency and 100 to 1000 X gems. I have found them in the past and I am using this whole bear market as an opportunity 
to get into cryptocurrencies at the best ever prices. Don't think that I am all perma bear because I hate cryptocurrency or I want the sector to fail. No, that's a thousand percent not the case. What I'm looking to do is utilize this bear market as a way of being able to make in just one cycle life-changing money, essentially turning a one million dollar portfolio into a 100 million dollar portfolio. That's what I'm planning to do and that can't be done unless you get cryptos at the absolute best prices. So if you love what you hear, you want to follow me if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the best thing that you could do for me right now if you're watching is just smashing the like button. Look, like button just there, just give it a tap, it's done and that helps me dramatically. So, we've got a lot to cover in today's live stream. And also, let me know, do you like me doing live streams? Or do you prefer the 10-minute, easily consumable information that I have been providing over the past month? To me, that's easily the easiest. But for you, is it the most helpful? Let me know in the comments. So, we have got so much to talk about today. And a lot of it is regarding tomorrow's FOMC meeting. So before we get into that, let me just say hi to you guys. First of all, so we got Let's Go Crypto, James Van Halen, Lindsay, Chris Marks, Outback Crypto, Rico Man, Mr. Nice Guy, Lawrence, Dijan, Mohammed, Klinbert, Nokia 1980, Oscar Antonio Campos, otherwise known as 3D Lancer, Severns, Taycan, Vanessa, Baby Tips, Charles Easy, BWS, The Cuckoo is in the Nest, Ryan K, Brickcoin, Ali Imam, Yes Zerd, SEO, Adulis, Steve Nen, Pavel, Can a Startup, Jason Troncoso. Why is it with this mouse worm shite? Jiminy, Leo Bray, Querty Bertie, O'Bro, Vico Soul, JB, Method 23 Crypto, Angie Kumar. Good to see you. Edwin Cohen, Big Boss Raza, Daniel D, Bridget Francis, Al Nightbird, Steve Nen, Van Busan Dai, Daniel Wilson, Steve, oh, I've said that one, Leonardo S.A., I think I've said that one too, Raymond Somo, Raymond Soto, ML Balmond, Audio Jackers, Julian, Raymond, Dr. Salem, Ferris Bear, Bettina J, Jamie Leg, The Underdog, Steve Age, Ag Ben, Hamza, Panza, Abdi, Paul, Said. What the hell, man? I'm ready at the bottom. You guys really do not show up the Twitch, the Twitch live uh, audience because they tend to. I, I tend to take five minutes going through all the hellos. Neo Matrix, Yefri, Valan, uh, Rasu, Night Ghost. MHZ Boxing. Also, people, I will be going through your crypto shouts with your knowledge and my experience. We could be looking at cryptocurrencies and I will be able to analyze. Do I think this is an opportunity? That's what we can do. So make sure you get in your altcoins in a little while. Right. OK, so let's just have a quick look at the market before we move into the uh, the, fanta the piece de resistance, essentially. So where Bitcoin sits at this present time is it has basically been met with this resistance for the last two days now. It has struggled to get over 28.3. So it's around about 28.1, 28.3. It's struggled to break through. And essentially, it doesn't look as if it's going to happen. So it looked as if that was probably going to be the case on Monday, when stocks all of a sudden started going up, but it doesn't look as if it's going to happen now. We've got Ethereum also struggling against the weight of resistance right here. It's got a resistance. Basically, it takes it back to 2021, and it's struggling to go really above the 1800. It's done it a little bit, but what I can say is that the Dow Jones, the S&P, the Nasdaq, they're all up today. And this could be a sign of what's going to happen tomorrow. There's a lot that is going to happen. Uh, there, there's Essentially, there's a lot to be gleamed 
from what's going to be happening. So basically, we have got, uh, in literally 21 hours, we have got the Fed interest rate decision, the Fed funds rate decision, which is, are they going to pause or are they going to increase by 25 basis points? There is no other option. It's one or the other. And there are a lot of financial pundits right now and big banks that are saying that the Fed need to pause, but it doesn't look as if they are going to pause. And what are the ramifications of that? So let's have a look. So Fed's looming rate decision could confirm crisis at hand or raise odds of imminent recession. So essentially a rock and a hard place. Like there is no good decision that's going to come out of tomorrow. So ahead of pivotal interest rate decision on Wednesday, the Federal Reserve faces a novel dilemma. Stubbornly high inflation amidst massive uncertainty over a banking crisis that could force a preemptive hiking pause, a prospect some analysts fear could make a potential recession worse than previously feared. Unfortunately, the Fed is boxed in. Morgan Stanley chief wrote that, uh, wrote caution, cautioning their clients am amongst investment challenges, which is that there's a likely, there's the big likelihood of the odds of an imminent recession. For the first time during the post-pandemic recovery, the outlook for the Fed and the US economy have become two-sided. Even the Bank of America has written that the Fed could hike more than expected to stubbornly cool, um, in, to cool stubbornly high inflation, but adding there's now a greater risk that the Fed could pause or lower rates. So essentially what it comes down to is, is that you either, you either pause rates, which means that because the Fed have not said they are going to keep on raising rates all through 2023. All right. They, that's what they said right, right from the offset. So by pausing, that leads one to think, why are they pausing? Okay. Because if they increase interest rates, they essentially put a strain on the banking system because they tighten financial policy for banks. It's going to make it even harder for them to survive. And the banking crisis is already struggling big time. We've already had the article that there are 186 banks at risk of failure. A lot of them do not have the ability to, to meet one for one. Well, they don't because of federal, because of uh, reserve, um, fractional reserve banking. They don't need to have in uh, reserves one for one with their clients. So basically we have got systemic risk in the banking system. So if they increase by 25 basis points, it's going to increase strain on the banks. It's going to dry up liquidity and bring about a credit crunch, which then brings about a recession. If they pause it, then it's going to make everybody fear something's going wrong. They're obviously pivoting on their previous decision to not raise, to raise, to not raise, to not lower or pause rates through 2023. So basically... People are going to fear. So either way, it's a rock and a hard place. So tomorrow could be really uh, pivotal at large. However, this is the thing I've been talking about for eight months now. This guy here, Donna Bedian, believes a likely recession will be the market clearing event that helps start a new bull market. This is normally the case. In the last 10 recessions, the stock market, the stock market bottomed on average four months before the recession ended. So out of 10 recessions, the stock market bottoms on average four months before the recession ends. So going into a recession is essentially seeing the kind of last of the crises happening, now. What, what, the last of the bear market, what we have been essentially under, undergoing since November 2021, even though quantitative tightening started March last year. So, I personally want there to be a recession because A, we can buy cryptos at the best prices and B, because it will clear the way for moving forward, recovery, bottoming. Because if a recession bottoms the market, the stock market and the crypto market in conjunction, then essentially, even with regulation, the bottom of the market should have been hit. The recession is the biggest headwind, how I see it anyway. But the current banking system is in turmoil. So, on Sunday, the Fed had an emergency meeting. Now, the Fed has had two emergency meetings in two weeks. One was to backstop Silicon Valley Bank. The second one, which was this weekend, was to help out Credit Suisse. But 
Other than those two events, the last time the Fed had Sunday emergency meetings was in the March 2020. And what happened in March 2020? That was when we saw the bottom of the Bitcoin market in that bear market, the last, bull, the last bear market. All right, so this seems like a kind of, I suppose, prelude to a bottoming. We could be finally, soon to be seeing the collapses finally happening, key support areas breached and going towards a bottom, which means that we will be able to buy cryptos, hopefully, at a better price. But I'll talk about that in a minute. But basically, that is what has happened in that Sunday meeting. It was to, it was to aid uh Bailing out credit suites, which obviously happened with, with uh, UBS's purchase. And the same could be said for First Republic after its 30 billion rescue package, courtesy of some of America's biggest banks. So we are seeing uh, bank bailout. We're seeing bank bailouts happening constantly right now. And uh, that, <laughs> that just basically identifies a big systemic risk. Basically, the larger banks are... They're trying to, you know, the US are trying to maintain confidence in the larger banks, but this is going to have a knock-on effect on small and regional banks. But I'll talk about that in a second. So what we have got is we have got a shortage of dollars. They're running out of dollars. So the Fed and global central banks move to boost dollar funding. So they are they have boosted the frequency of swap line operations so swap line is is basically like trading in cryptocurrency like swapping uh, one currency for another essentially so swapping another country's currency for dollars and basically bringing more dollars back into the economy from global banks because all, all sorts of banks the us are running out of dollars so they're having to go to global banks that have dollars in their cash reserves and borrowing it to help them from fund, uh, funding strain. Okay, so this was part of the move that came in that Sunday meeting. And now we have got mid-size and small US banks asking the Fed insurance policy, basically the guys who have bailed out the bank so far, to insure deposits for the next two years. Financial system risks more bank runs without aid. So basically, as I said, the US are trying to maintain some form of stability and confidence in the larger banks, but without actually helping the smaller banks, because it's kind of like it's your fault. So they are asking for the smaller, medium-sized banks are asking for the FDIC to help ensure their deposits for the next two years in order to help them survive this uh, this this whole crisis, basically. So there is so much there's so much turmoil happening right now in the banking sector, which is going to have an overall effect on the stock market. Like I said, we have not seen an emergency, emergency Sunday emergency banking meetings happening since pre-COVID, pre the market bottom, which is where we had essentially Bitcoin finding its lowest low in the 2018-2019 bear market. So Bitcoin, okay, Bitcoin didn't actually go lower than its December low in December 2018. But everything else did, as I showed you in the last stream, 82% of altcoins, and that is and that is only looking at a small segment of altcoins. Okay, that's saying 100 altcoins. If we're, if we're looking at what was the ecosystem back then, it was probably about 1,500, 2,000 altcoins. Then actually it was probably more 95% of altcoins found their second bottom uh, found their bottom, their, un their ultimate bottom, in the second low. So this is the thing that I have been warning that I believe is going to be happening in the crypto market, which is that we are going to have a second low, and that second low is going to be about 12 to 14k. So that's my personal perspective. Others have been, have been, you know, kind of conjecturing that it's going to be even lower than 12k, like sub 10k, 7k and things like that. But my buy point is 12, 14K. Now, by buy point, I don't mean buying buying Bitcoin because you know, you'll know, I don't actually buy Bitcoin. Buying Bitcoin is for suckers. Bitcoin has already achieved a critical mass. It's already got billions, billions of addresses, billions of dollars. What is the point? It's not no longer an early asset. Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is wealth preservation. 
Okay, with Bitcoin's wealth preservation, altcoins are wealth generation. So I won't be buying Bitcoins. Bitcoin will only be my hedge, right? So once, it depends on what the lay of the land looks like by the end of uh, the next bull market. You know, when it comes to the end of the bull market, you go into, you know, towards a euphoria stage, you're looking to cash out. Then I will, you know, stable coins at this present time, are at risk of not even being around in the next bull market, at, are at risk, okay? It could be replaced by CBDCs at that time. In which case, Bitcoin is the only thing that I will put my money into. I'm not gonna put it back into uh, a CBDC. I'm not gonna be doing that because I don't, you know, I, I, I don't wanna be touching that shit. So anyway, yeah, so Bitcoin is what I'll go into after a bull market, not before a bull market. I don't give a shit what, what predictions uh, come up. Anyway, so regarding the FOMC meeting, the two options are pause or 25 basis points. Goldman Sachs is saying that the Fed should pause. They need to pause in order to allow for the markets to recover, in order to allow for banks to not feel so much strain. So Goldman Sachs brought out a report two days ago saying that they believe the Fed should pause and will pause. We've also got Ernst & Young. Could they, will they, should they? Yes, the Fed continue to tighten monetary policy. Yes, the Fed will likely raise the federal funds rate to 25 basis points. No, the Fed shouldn't. The optimal approach would be to pause. KPMG says the Fed should, only should not only delay any further rate hikes, but should also withhold economic projections scheduled to be released at the conclusion of this week's meeting because they would create more chaos than clarity. So everybody's panicking. All the big banks are panicking right now. And rightly so, because look, you know, we are seeing a potential banking sector fall, essentially. Now, of course, they're going to be saved in large part, right? That's what always happens. That's what's going to happen again. However, what is the alternative? CBDCs. That's what they're kind of making way. Look, everything's coinciding perfectly. A recession, bank crisis, CBDCs, cryptocurrency, and cryptocurrency regulation. It's all coinciding very, very nicely. And the market, in my opinion, is being positioned so big banks are actually at the helm of cryptocurrency onboarding. So I think everything is coming together in almost a perfect storm. Like, it, it could almost not have been choreographed better because everything is kind of the dominoes are being placed and set and the path of dominoes is is set it's, it's gonna all fall down and there's gonna be a new order in place now bitcoin is up over 40 percent since the march banking crisis began why well if you've been watching me you will know that in times of low volume which we had, if you if you saw my video from a couple of weeks ago, where we were actually on around about 30 billion in daily volume, you will see that is the absolute best time to be able to either crash or boost the market. So we had very, very low liquidity. And what happened was, is two things happened as a result. Two things caused for Bitcoin to go up 40%. Number one is this, okay? So I don't care what people say. As I said, what happened last Sunday, not the Sunday that's just gone, but last Sunday, what happened last Sunday was is that the Fed printed $300 billion to save Silicon Valley Bank. $300 billion. Now, as I brought you in the last stream, the Fed, in every FOMC meeting, every FOMC meeting, they say the same thing. We are taking steps to significantly reduce the size of our balance sheet. So they, the Fed, are looking to get their balance sheet down to 5.8 billion, 5 .8 billion, okay, which is basically this figure here, around about here on April 1st, 2020, which is miles away from at 8.9 billion. So they have been bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down. Therefore, inflation's been coming down because they haven't had to print as much. And now they have backstopped Silicon Valley Bank. They've printed money. Printing money, like with what happened here, because this was the bottoming period for Bitcoin, right? So... This was the point at which, you know, they started injecting money into the economy, quantitative easing as it were, is the point at which Bitcoin started to absolutely rise back in 2020, okay? So it was at this point, at this point here, marries up with this point here, 
right? They pumped money into the economy. They printed 25% of all dollars that was ever printed ever in one year. And that obviously kicked off a bull market, right? Co coinciding perfectly with the Bitcoin halving. It's almost like Satoshi, whoever Satoshi is, couldn't have thought of a better, you know, kind of time to place halving events. Makes you wonder about who Satoshi really is, doesn't it? Anyway, so as soon as the money printer goes on, people assume a bull market's going to start. Money printer started last Sunday, not the Sunday that's just gone, the Sunday before. Money printer started. And so people assume it's a repeat of this. No, it's not. This is not quantitative easing. This is not pumping money into the economy. This is pumping money into the banks to save the banks. It's not giving everybody stimulus, like what happened all the way back here in COVID. It's not giving people paychecks. It was providing money for the banks. So by doing so, now people are wrongly assuming that it's quantitative easing and money's being pumped back into the market, and it's not. So that is a fallacy. Then we had this, which was Binance converting 1 billion BUSD, 1 million billion dollars in BUSD, which is essentially the same thing, into Bitcoin, BNB, and Ethereum. Now, obviously, as we've seen, Bitcoin and Ethereum have actually been amongst the best performers lately. Okay, 28K, 1800. Amidst all coins actually not doing that great. All coins actually not doing that great. So if we have a look, it's a Bitcoin season. Okay, we're nowhere near an altcoin season. So Bitcoin is actually outperforming everything because of this fallacy uh, that people believe is a hedge to banks. It's not. You know, it's just it was low liquidity, low liquidity, low daily volume e equals easy manipulation, easy making the price go up or down, and that's what happened. It went down to 19.5, went up to 28.3. That's what's happened. That's the reason. Okay, low liquidity, easy to manipulate, easy to pump. Now we're in a situation where we are at the all-time high of greed since 2021. Since November 2021. November 2021 was the conclusion of the bear market. So greed was in abundance and we have basically equaled that. We have equaled that. Crypto market sentiment. We have equaled the top of the bull run in 2021. Does this seem right to you? With all this carnage going on, does this seem right to you? So anyway, we have got we have got the although it's not been seen in the last couple of weeks, well, last week because of banking turmoil, the crypto market is not up, is not under is not safe. It's not safe. Look, Fetch Edger in Powell. Turmoil, fraud, run risk is being monitored. He is looking to enforce policy in the crypto market in conjunction with what's happening with banks. He doesn't believe, you know, because of, because of events like uh, FTX, uh, because of Terra Luna, because of Celsius, etc, etc. Basically, this is a space that needs regulation, needs control. Uh, that it needs to have clarity in what should exist, what should be classed as security, how should you on-ramp, how do you ensure investor safety. And this is what I mean. Like, this is exactly why I just fit, think everything is all related. Everything is a circle. Everything is a circle. Banks go down. There's, there's you know, potential spotlight on Bitcoin. They're bringing out CBDC, so they're, they're highlighting crypto, but they're also at the same time looking to control crypto, manage onboarding via government C government issued CBDCs, and also via ETFs. Do you want exposure? You do it via an ETF. If you want to go via CBDC, then you can own the asset and be your own bank-ish, or you can go via a, a bank, you know, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan. Um, Fidelity, whatever, you know, they're, they're going to be offering ETFs, they're going to be offering services that enable one to have exposure to crypto without necessarily being a custodian of the crypto. And it's all a circle. It all is, is all seems like it, 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 it's coming to a head. So anyway, so there we are, people. That is, that's how things stand at the moment. Now let's have a look at probably the most important thing, which is the liquidations. So given what's happening in the market right now, you know, there's kind of like a, an uncertainty 
Bitcoin's already run up to 28. People say it could go to 30, 32. Now, others are saying this should be the end. It should be going down to 2018. And uh, as a result of that, look at the amount of wreckage that has taken place in the crypto market. Like it's majority, it's a majority short position. Now there's some longs coming in because, you know, we kind of come to a head at 28, 28.3. Um, so it's gonna, there's going to naturally be some longs, but it's mostly been short positions. You know, a hell of a lot of liquidation. The exchanges are making money. Exchanges are profiting as well. It's, it's hilarious, really, if you think about it. If you have a look at how, how the sentiment is going, basically what it looks like is it's around about three to one ratio. Three people going long, probably one person going short. That is, you know, roughly, uh, that's, that's roughly stronger on the short side than it has been in the past week, which says to me the potential that tomorrow we uh, are, are possibly going to be seeing a crash. But for which reason? The reason being either one is, is that they're tightening policy for banks or two, they're actually freezing and therefore confirming crisis at hand. Right. OK, let me let me answer some questions because I see some super chats in the corner of my eye. So I'll firstly answer those and then I'll have a look and see uh, what what um, what you guys what you guys are saying. Jerry, you've got Jerry in the house. What do you think of ICP? Uh, I'll have a look at that in a little bit, actually. I'll have a look in a in a moment. If you don't mind. Um, Lawrence. Oh, wow. Lawrence, you beauty. 50, 60 euros. Thank you for doing what you do. Much appreciative by most of us. Keep it up. Awesome content. Simply the best crypto YouTuber by far. Always on point and up to date. You rock. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Lawrence. Uh, the the money is obviously fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I will say this, right? I you know, much appreciative by most of us. You know, I don't I don't give a shit what people uh, people think, right? Uh, I know I'm at odds with pretty much every everyone in cryptocurrency YouTube right now. I know everybody. I can't really I can't really see a single person saying what I'm saying. Not one person is actually, other than Gareth Soloway, who's not really a cryptocurrency YouTuber, uh, but other than Gareth Soloway, not one person is actually confirming that we are going bearish than bullish. Everybody is jumping on the bull bandwagon. Everybody is saying that we are going up, even though we may not go up to this night, this million dollars or whatever that was the bet. Yeah, of course, we're not going to be going to that, but we are going to be going up. We should see upwards action. Everybody's saying the bottom's now in. Everybody's saying that we should be thriving. And I know I'm the antithesis now. I'm basically the last one saying this now. And I know people have said, um, you know, the people who are looking for 12 to 14K are just clutching at straws. No. Did you not listen to the last however many minutes I've been talking? Do you not listen to all the rationale? Like if I was just here saying, I think 12 to 14K is happening and that's it, left it at that. Then fine, you could say he he doesn't he he's hoping he's wishing, right? But no, I come with rationale each and every time. And basically, as I've just said, where we saw the second bottom was where we last saw emergency meetings happening on a Sunday with the Fed, and that is happening now. So we could be seeing the impending fall. The second thing is is that we always bottom twice before a new bull market. We always bottom twice before the halving. If I go back and have a look, take you through basically the entire, hold on, take you through the entire history of Bitcoin, right since the beginning, 2010, look, two bottoms, two bottoms, two bottoms before a halving, each and every time. And what have we had so far? One bottom, one. Now, you may say, oh, well, maybe this was the second bottom. No, because every time a bottom happens, the first bottom happens, the asset typically runs up by 200% before coming down. Bitcoin at this present time has only gone up 77%. Admittedly, that's a lot, but that's still not enough. to. And that was not the case before it found if that was to be classed as a second bottom. It had only gone up 63% at that point. 
So the market cycle seems to be playing out exactly the same as it always has. Look, how it played out in 2020, no, 2019, 2018 to 2019, was that it bottomed in about December time, December 2018, basically the first year of the bear market, it bottomed. And then it had a fantastic run up and then eventually found a second bottom after a fantastic run up. What could be described what's happening here is a fantastic run up. You know, 15 to 30k in a in an asset with the critical mass that Bitcoin has. Yeah, that's pretty. That's that's actually very significant. But that is not enough. This not enough. And the second thing is, is that I was around at this period here. I lived and breathed every day of this. I was bringing out videos every day of this. And each and every time, I was I was like the hero at the time. I was saying. The bull mark, the bear market's over. With every single, with every single bear market rally, I was saying the bear, the bear market is over, and it kept on proving me wrong. It kept on making me look stupid, and I vowed never to let that happen to me again. And then I eventually, in October 2019, I said we were going to fall down to 3,700, and we did. We did. I'm gonna share that video. Uh, it's on my previous channel. But I said we were going to go down. And this was when Bitcoin was at 7,000. I said we are going to go down to 3,700. People were like, you're stupid, Suvo. You're wrong. Well, you've capitulated. You're the only one saying this. And I was the only one that was right. So I take comfort in being actually one of the only ones. Because actually the people who are saying it's a bull market starting, the, the bear market's over, weren't even around when I was doing videos. They, they, they were just starting. They were, they were noobs. And I had gone through the turmoil of 2018, 2019. So never again, never again. This time I'm going with experience. I'm going with experience. Anyway, but thank you, Lawrence. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Um... Neil, Neil, Orange, Peel, Meadow Private Sale Live Launchpad on Sui First Mover. Meadow Presale. Okay. Um. Uh, 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 uh. Let me see. Crypto Savvy. I don't know who Crypto Savvy is. But I would say that I am one of the mainstream YouTubers. Crypto Savvy isn't a mainstream YouTuber. So of the mainstream YouTubers, you know, the ones that people actually listen to, I'm the only one that probably has the guts to say, you know, we're, we, I personally believe we're going down and we're going to find another bottom. The only one that has the guts. Whilst basically, you got other, I'm not going to say who, but, um, uh, you know, you've got certain... MTR says it, certain influencers saying, taking the piss out of people that are saying 12 to, people waiting for 12 to 14k. You know, um, I just have to wait, wait and see. Mouse Worm loves you, friend. Thank you very much, Noble, for the, uh, for the 499. I appreciate. What? Inia Glass? What the fuck? 79.99 Australian dollars. How are you physically? I really wish I could play that, but I can't. For fear of, of getting de- Well, no, fear of copyright strike or, or something stupid. I don't, you know, as you all know, I don't really need to give YouTube much of, a, much of a reason to ban me. They've done it before and they did it in the last bear market. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try and, and, and not give them opportunities to, get, to do it again. But Inia, thank you. That's amazing. What a beauty you are, in all honesty. Um, we haven't reached Max Payne yet. Exactly. Like, if you were around, if you were living and breathing crypto back here, which some of you will, some of you have been with me for a long time, you will know the pain was, was, was gargantuan. The thing that I'm trying to be very careful of, like, in my opinion, like, if I am wrong, if I am wrong, because the cryptocurrency market can make a fool of you no matter what your experience level is, if I am wrong... Um, what was the point I was going to make? If I am wrong, then this is the weirdest bear market ever. Because as far as I'm concerned, unlike every other bear market that you've seen of the past, 
you know, where we had 80, we had 95 to 85 percent drawdowns for Bitcoin in really the mother of bear market. Bitcoin goes down 70 percent. That's shit. Bitcoin goes down 70 percent. The stock market goes down 21 percent in the face of recession. That, that does not that doesn't sound right, does it? So, no, it just doesn't feel like the pain marries up with the event. This is a different bull market to every bear market than every other bear market we've had before. This one is the everything bubble bursting. And we've never had that before. So quite why people, you know, think this is the, this is the max pain we've had. It just, it, just, it just, to me, it just sounds fucking ridiculous. Anyway, so what I'm careful of, though, this is the thing I don't want to happen. The thing I don't want to happen is, is, is that we have a situation where, let's, let's say, you know, we go up to 30k for May, and then the May FOMC meeting, that's just, this is a scenario, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but then the May FOMC, FOMC meeting, they actually do freeze, if not, actually reverse the funds rate and actually bring it down, so they actually reverse the Fed funds rate and it starts to go down to the fours, then that will definitely cause for market panic, right? Because that the, the market will have to be re in really dire circumstances to unlock one of that. And so let's say we just go straight straight down, right? Stairs up, elevator down. Where this lands is going to be the thing that one can't fuck up, right? Now, I'm not saying one is going to hit the exact bottom, but that's why I've got a figure for it. 12 to 14k. If Bitcoin goes 12 to 14k, I will buy alts at that point. Alts at that point should have gone down 50 to 75%, if not more than that, from where they are now. Right? Um, because even though I accurately called this in 2017, 2019, even though I accurately called 3,700, I didn't actually buy Bitcoin at that point. Right? So, um, because I was buying something else called Chainlink, which you all know full well. That was my slam dunk coin of 2020, uh, which made a fantastic run up from here um, and was much better than Bitcoin, right? So that I, I will never buy Bitcoin at the bottom. But it's just to have in mind, what's the figure you're going to buy at, right? Because if it all falls down to shit, it could go down to 12k, it could go down to 10k, it could go down to 8k. My bet is worst case scenario will be about 10, maybe under. But the safe zone is 12 to 14. I'm happy to get into alts at that point. Because if we have a look at alts. So I've done a bit of an update, right? I've done a bit of an update on two sheets. So the first sheet, these are the 2022 coins, right? So, uh, well, 2022, 2023. Let me just slightly amend that. 2022, 2023 coins, right? So I firstly was compiling this list during my Twitch streams in January. So a lot of these coins, um, these were coins that I wanted to basically reflect my new criteria for investing, which is they have to be not bull run exposed. Secondly, they've got to be outside the top 500, right? So this gives me a good ability to see what's in what position at what point. So outside the top 500, because looking at the, the ones that did the absolute best in um, 20, uh, not this one, uh, not that one, uh, this one, um, the best coins were the ones that were outside the top 500, okay? So that's why outside the top 500 is what I was looking for. So outside the top 500 had zeros in the price. It wasn't a pound, a uh, dollar. It wasn't $10. It was under a dollar because those did the best. And then they went narrative plays. That's why I've got types here as well. So I was compiling this list. And so I've done a little bit of a, a have a look and see how are things actually doing two months on since you know, the bottom. So I firstly compiled these prices in December, January. And as of March, this is three months later. How have they done? And there's only a couple that have done really well. Obviously, AIPad, um, Hello Labs, which if Jerry's in the house, uh, was certainly instrumental in this. Uh, this has gone up 5.3, oh, it's currently 5.3x. It did go a bit higher, I think. But it's currently 5.3x higher than it was back in January. 
Uh, Loop for four X, Impulse X, another one uh, Jerry spoken about lately. Three X, Immutable X, two point eight. Um, but actually, for the most part, n not not many have actually look out of only th only twelve have actually two X. The rest of them are are either they've they've increased by a bit or actually they've decreased. So you've not actually lost a lot so far. You know, if you, you know, people are like, worst case scenario, I'm on the sidelines, I haven't bought yet. Actually, that came out a bit high pitch. Actually, most cryptos haven't done their run yet. And if I have a look at you know, my DCAs, what have I bought so far? Um, I've done a little bit of a, a calculation on this too. So obviously these were my DCA prices. So I only buy when there is severe blood. So I was buying in the end of December. So I was buying in that beautiful period, which I wish we could go back to, but I'm sure we will have again. A beautiful period in the middle to the end of December, where we were seeing Solana FUD, Hex FUD, all that, all that great stuff. And so I bought some, at some beautiful prices, as you'll know, and spent, you know, roughly 26k um, you know, which you may think is quite a lot, but it's actually not compared to my large pot, which is about um, over a million. Um, 26 case, fuck all, right? So I, I, I've actually used hardly any of my stables at this point. Um, at the uh, after the big January pump, the AI pump, and all that, it had gone up to fifty-seven thousand, and as of today, it has actually come down a bit, fifty-three. It's not down to these levels, but um, again, I've looked at the DCA multipliers, and for the most part. Only, what, eight have actually done more than a 2x. So, um, Hex, obviously, this is, this is fucking annoying. Um, because this is the one I spent the least on. So, I put $189 into Hex. What was I fucking thinking, man? I put $189 into Hex. Today, that's worth a thousand, a thousand, thousand and sixty-nine. So, that's, that's, that's quite upsetting. Because it's the one I put in the least. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So 5.6x, 5.4, which is optimism. Uh, 3.4 immutable. 3 for ocean. 3.8 aptos. That did a mega run. Um, but it's not as high as it was. It was like, what, near, near $19, $20? Gala 2.2, Solana 2.3. So actually, right, if you were thinking about, oh, I, I wish I'd got in at 9.91. I'm just saying this just in case, you know, you really are itching. Um, it's only gone up 2.23x. So let's say, let's say you were wanting to put $1,000 into Solana and you wish you'd put it in at 9.91. If you put... Instead of 1000 if you put at today's price, 2300 you've got the same quantity as me. Basically, right? Well, not the same quantity because I spent four thousand on Solana, but um, you have the same quantity as me uh, if I was buying a thousand. So they haven't really gone up. So you'd only really, for the most part, only need to put one point five on top of what I did. So if I put a thousand in a particular cryptocurrency, you only have to be put fifteen hundred. So actually, it's not a lot at this stage. If you're really dying to get in, you don't believe that we you don't believe there's going to be a, a bear scenario, then actually we've not gone out, we've not actually pushed out too much for the most part. You know, and I'm talking about really good cryptocurrencies like like Decentraland and um, uh, the Sandbox. Well, well sand, Sandbox is 1.6. Doge Chain is 1.4. It's hardly, hardly gone up, actually. Um, so you look, and, and in some cases, like Helium has actually gone down. So I bought, how much? Four hundred and sixty-eight dollars of helium at around about one eighty-six or or maybe even more, and now it's one thirty-two. So, yeah, you know, actually, in some cases, it pays to wait. Not in most cases, but I think that these prices are going to go down hideously. Like considering that Bitcoin, you know, when Bit when when these prices hit their, you know, hit these lowest DCA prices, Bitcoin was like sixteen k, right? Bitcoin's now at 30k, it's doubled, and that would normally mean 
that these altcoins should have 6x at least because altcoins tend to do a factor of three on what Bitcoin does. So if Bitcoin doubles, then they should basically go up 6x and they haven't. So actually, the, the, the ball hasn't really started rolling on altcoins. But that also says to me that when Bitcoin goes down to 12 to 14, these altcoins are going to get eradicated and, well, not eradicated, but they're going to get uh, eviscerated. And um, it's actually, these prices are going to look like very high prices to have bought at. That's my personal belief. That's where I think. That's what I think anyway. So, <clears throat> see you. Um, any more questions? Well, there's loads. There's loads of chat. So let me, let me just trawl through it. Lowest DCA for Hex. Uh, lowest DCA for Hex, 1.7 cents. That's about where I would buy too. Yeah, so my, so in a video I did on Twitch, um, I think it was the same video as Solana because Solana and Hex were having the exact same, were having problems at the exact same time. And uh, I was I, I was like, oh, I was actually salivating at Hex going down because my optimal price for Hex was 0 0.009. So it was halfway there. And uh, I mean, I only need to lose half its value and then it would be exactly where it was. But to spend $100 was so dumb. Like, what the hell? That was stupid. Because even if it does go down to that price, in that whole interim period, in the last four months, I could have been earning an interest on that Hex. So I kind of like fucked up there. But... Um, uh, better off buying Bitcoin than Hex. I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. I mean, look at Hex. Hex is nearly 10 x and Bitcoin is 2 x So that shows you that Hex moves. And yes, admittedly, there is a kind of buy the rumor, sell the news event. But there, so is there, there is one for Ethereum. And that's hardly gone up. You know, 1,200 worst to... 1800 not a lot actually and yet they've got shanghai update coming soon which is where it really turns into proof of stake and yet that's hardly gone up and yet hex because of pulse chain that's done a near 10x so it just goes to show how that will move in a bull market but i do think that richard hart's um i do think his movements and his tweets have been very odd lately hi super if 12k was your bottom then you must have entered at 15k DCA. Maybe bottom is in due to macro perspective, devil's advocate. I don't get what that's saying. Maybe bottom's in due to the macro perspective. The macro perspective has not even played out. Like as far as, there's another graph. There's another graph that's basically showing that it's a it's a macro. I don't really want to be too, I didn't really want to kind of just, just, just enforce a load of, diction from the macro environment on you but basically it's looking at um 10 and 12 year uh, two and 10 year treasuries and the yield curve and basically um what it was showing was is that there was an inverse curve to the yield that, that has now begun to open up and that inverse curve typically leads to a bear market so there's an argument that the bear market has not actually even started yet so i personally think that uh, I, th I personally think there is a lot of, there's a lot worse to come. And that, that might be the pessimist in me, or it actually might be the realist in me. But, um, yeah, but I, I, but remember, I'm not buying Bitcoin. I'm buying altcoins. I don't give a shit for Bitcoin, right? Because yes, when, 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 when all cards are dealt at the end of a bear mark, at the end of a bull market, Bitcoin is always going to be the one that slightly preserves its value because everybody would have cashed out into stables or Bitcoin and Bitcoin is the number one. It's the McDonald's. So when all is settled and the bear market comes along and basically brings a whole tsunami of losses to all altcoins, Bitcoin is always the one that kind of seemed like the best asset at the end of the day. But it isn't. During a bear mark, during a bull market, you do not see the gains that altcoins make with Bitcoin. Look, ball to ball. Fucking look at those multipliers. Like Bitcoin did a 3,100 3, to 69,000. That was amazing, to be fair. That's a 20K, uh, 20X. But, you know, 95% of altcoins beat that. You know, bottom to top. Virtually everything beat Bitcoin. Bitcoin is 
Where is Bitcoin? Bitcoin's here. During a bull market, everything outperforms Bitcoin. You've just got to be good at cashing out. You've got to cash out. If you cash out, then you solidify the multipliers whilst improving your Bitcoin. Now, it is a risky game to play. Once upon a time, I had 66 Bitcoins and 800 Ethereum, right? Stupidly, in between 2018 and 2019, so at the end of 27, at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, when all was said and done, I made my 300x on Ethos and turned 20,000 into 5 million. And then I put it into Bitcoin and Ethereum. I had 66 Bitcoin. I had 800 Ethereum. And then I pissed it all up the wall on altcoins. So, yes, I mean, I Bitcoin and Ethereum are the strongest, but they're wealth preservation. What I should have done, and looking back, and what I would do next time, what I will do next time, is at the end of the bull market, I will cash it into stables, if they're still around, or into Bitcoin, because Bitcoin will preserve it better than just hodling altcoins. That's what I'll do next time. It will go into Bitcoin. But in the run-up, in bottom to top, Bitcoin is never going to out... Well, it hasn't up till now. Depending on the regulation situation, then it's unlikely to again, unless every, every proof-of-stake coin is deemed a security. There is that risk. There is that risk. And in which case, Bitcoin will fly. But we'll have to wait and see. But I, I will say I did buy altcoins throughout that whole period. And if you were watching me on Twitch, you would have seen every single time I said I was buying. And I even showed you my um, order history on Binance buying these coins. So, yeah, I was buying, but I didn't buy enough. But I did buy, I did buy quite a lot. I, you know, what I did buy... Let's say that was the bottom of the market. I'm not expecting huge gains on it because we haven't gone down low enough to create the gains. My personal opinion. Um, Loop Network, Super Schedule Blockchain. Yeah, I've got Loop Network and it's one of the better 2022 performers, 2022 coin performers so far, Topath. I'll probably get into that at the bottom though. I would say, because that's got a good chance of basically being, that's why I did it. You know, I'm looking for, I'm looking to replicate all things being equal, which they probably won't be. Um, all things being equal, looking for the same kind of criteria that caused the best. You know, the best gainers finding that criteria in the new coins, because all of these, save for Dogecoin, Decentraland, Chainlink, which I was lucky enough to be in. Engine. This is zero, that's an anomaly. Pretty much everything that over 150x had not previously been in a bull market. They were new. So that's why new coins are the best. Because new coins are virgin territory. You, They have no current ceiling. They could really fly. And that's, that's the method behind this list. Oddly enough, um, a star uh, was four and a half cents here. It ran up to like 12 cents. So that's come down majorly. So it just goes to show that in these bear market periods, if it has a good run up, it's not sustainable. It won't be sustained. Okay, so you don't really have to worry. Same happened with Aptos. You know, I do think it's going to come down again. Do I think it's going to come down to the optimal buy price of like $2? Probably not. But I hope it does. Well, $1 actually, I think it was. Minimal buy-in. Why is that just not even on here? Oh, well, never mind. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that another time. Um... Hold on a minute. Pappy's, Pappy check. Hi, Soup. I'd like to share a story of what happened to me yesterday so nobody in our community will do such a stupid mistake. I'm new in crypto and I don't have much experience. 
I am a huge fan of yours and I'm waiting for the piece, prices to crush to deploy my U, USDT and my USDC to become and buy and become rich. After watching your video yesterday, I decided to check and see if I got um, any Arbitrum airdrop. Little did I know I didn't connect to the right website. It was an exact copy of the real one. Long story short, my MetaMask got raided. Oh, shit. And I lost all my funds. First time I almost wanted to cry. And then first time I almost got a heart attack. Then I wanted to cry. All my savings gone. Plan to become rich too. Please be careful where you connect your wallet to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm sharing this so that it doesn't happen to you. Supo, do you think I can get my funds back? No, probably not, if I'm honest with you. Because you've basically given permissions to, um, a, you know, a kind of alien entity to, to take control of your funds. It's very unlikely. That's the problem with MetaMask. But, um, and, and this was, and this was the exact reason. So if you, uh, you know, so what I said the other day was the reason I hadn't checked at that point about the Arbitrum airdrop is because I don't want to connect my wallet to anything because the risk of connecting your wallet to anything is always huge. So I, I didn't even look. Even though it was the actual official page, because I got it from an official source, uh, I still don't do it. I hate to connect my wallet to anything. Uh, it's it's There's a massive risk of loss uh, in doing so. Uh, I don't even like doing it with... Um, I don't even like doing it with pancake swap and uni swap it if I'm honest with you I hate it it's very so I I I am um my sympathies to you cuz that is that's harsh that's harsh but on the plus side there's always a train in cryptocurrency you'll make that 3700 back but even still that's terrible it's terrible and I fucking hate these scamming bastards <laughs> true story wait a minute Shit, hold on. $49 from, well, Elon Musk, obviously, the real Elon Musk. Mouseworm, you should see the cartoons by creators, that from by animators from Rick and Morty, a gem that many don't know about. Ticker is Mouseworm, pull up. Well, you know, for kind of $50, one has to, right? Mouseworm. 33k. Uh, a one million max supply. This will probably be used on Mouseworm's marketing. They'll probably like put it all over their Twitter now. Oh, Supo, Supo endorses Mouseworm. The fuck is this, man? <gasps> I'm afraid to touch anything, but I don't have my my main. It's a, it looks NFTs. I don't even know what the fuck this is. I mean, it's not a good first page. Put it that way. So that's feedback. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh. How many people hold this? 530 people, really? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do what, do what Jerry does and see if they've bought Twitter followers. 2,144. Um, it's, it kind of matches, but... Yeah, drawings. Mm, yeah. To me, it's not really a brand that that is like uh, this isn't gonna be an NFT of uh, it's not gonna be an NFT of like a uh, bored ape status. But I really appreciate your uh, contribution. That's that's lovely. That's wonderful. Um, if we hit twelve k, I'm sure you'll come back and still say we haven't hit the bottom yet. Yeah. <laughs> That is exactly, that's the problem. A guy I listen to, the only guy I actually really listen to is RJ Rajendran. He's the guy who taught me uh, about, about everything, right? He, yeah, it's thanks to him, the likes of Ethos and Matic and all that happened, you know? So, and he's always been right a lot of the time. And he has said 7K. 
7k. I am not, I don't think it's going to go down that low, but he could be right. Okay, he could be right. Now, he said a wick down to 7k, which means it's going to be, unless you've got a buy order for that particular moment in time, then you'll likely not catch it. And even still, you know, um, you, you'd have to be quite, you'd have to be like 7,100. It goes to 7k, you'll get it filled that way. If you've got one at 7k, it may not get filled. So, yeah, so yeah, I, I may I may hold back some. I may hold back some. So I'm looking if it goes twelve to fourteen K, I would be looking to probably at that point offload about six hundred thousand dollars at that point. Um maybe. It depends on how clear things are regulatory, because I don't want to put hundred K into something, it's called to security, and then I'm basically shagged. Because that will hurt. Doesn't matter how much money you have, 100k hurts. So anyway, yeah, so, but I will look to deploy at that point and, um, and then leave some behind in case it goes a little bit lower. But I will do the majority of my buying, is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, mm -mm -mm. If BTC will go down, alts will bleed out, yeah. Absolutely. Moon River or Moonbeam? Moon River. Um, Moonbeam. I would say, anyway. Crypto Chrissy, good to see you. Leonardo. Leonardo. Hi, Supo. Oh, Arbitrum is launching tomorrow, is it? I thought Arbitrum was launching on 23rd. Uh, Arbitrum is launching tomorrow on over 50 exchanges. What price are you aiming for? I'm not, I'm, I'm not aiming for any. I'm not aiming for any until... The recession. I'm not gonna buy any. I'm not gonna buy any arbitrum. No. Uh, I think it might be on Coin Gecko. I'm not sure. Oh no, here we are. Arbitrum IOU 729. So, like I said, um, what? What? Low 281. My. Circulating is 10 billion. Okay, one dollar might be a bit much, right? Are you sure it's going to be fully in circulation? If it is, then seven dollars on that market cap is 72 billion. That's ridiculous. You can't make gains on that. You can't make gains on that. You know, the reason why Matic was one of the best calls of all time, my calls, obviously, um, was because it started at about a million. You know, I got into it, I think, at about a million dollars market cap. So that's got explosive upside, but not this. That's ridiculous. Like, it would... One dollar means it'd be 10 billion starting market cap, which, that's too high. That's way too high. So I would say a good price for Arbitrum, a good price would be about 1 billion, which means it'd have to be 10 cents. And that, I think, would be the price I would probably get it at, because, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not going to make explosive gains from 10, from 10 billion. Because you know, let's have a look. What's Bitcoin at? Five hundred forty-two billion. The best crypto, the top cryptocurrency in all the world. And you're telling me that a, a, a coin that's not even had stood the test of time could at any point be classed as security is is only going to come out seven times less. No, that's not good. So I would be looking arbitrum. I'd be looking for. Uh, yeah, ten cents is what I would. If that, if if the circulating is ten billion, which I'm not sure if it is, because I'm I'm sure there's going to be more airdrops. But if that is the case, then um, I would say ten cents. Can you say again who are you sticking with? What do you mean by that? Right, I uh, said I was going to have a look at internet computer. Uh, which I did look at um, back in the day. Uh, it was on one of my hit lists. 
So immediate impressions is is that it doesn't really marry up. Like the volume is pretty low for a market cap of this size. You know, I'd expect this kind of volume for maybe a gaming coin. Let's just have a look at Magic, which is a gaming coin. And that's got 10x. No, 15x what Internet Computer has. Now, I remember Definity, then further named as um, Internet Computer, because this came out, um, or this the token self, this was like early 2018. And uh, it made probably amongst the biggest ever return on investments for early investors. But... So my understanding is, is that this is, this is in essence, a decentralized computer, right? It's like a decentralized infrastructure completely exclusive of outside third-party um, server providers like Amazon Web Services and all that. So this is, this is the first decentralized whole computer where you've got storage, you've got ability to create dApps, smart contracts, so it is it, it so by rights it's quite a major project with a very low transaction cost. This is one tenth, hundredth, thousandth, twenty thousandths of a cent, which is ridiculous. Uh proof stake could be a risk, but then so is ninety five percent of the market if, if this is a <clears throat> Messaging fully on chain, gaming fully on chain, NFTs fully on chain. So everything gets run off the internet computer versus running it on Amazon Web Services or something like that. So yeah, I mean it's 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 a uh, ambitious project. Looks good, however, and yeah, it's on a decent amount of watch. It's not quite marrying up with what I would say would constitute a thirty nine rank. So I don't think that there's a lot of retail interest in this, from what I can gather. Um, 1.3 million accounts. So this is roughly on par with Nier. And Nier has 29 million. And Algorand is roughly the same, I would say. Yeah, so, you know, they're all kind of all in the same field-ish. So, I would say that Internet Computer was an underperformer compared to its value. I think if this was, you know, if, if this was like maybe uh, one fifty or one dollar, that'd be pretty much where I'd see it right now. And so, therefore, about fifty cent, probably lose about ten x. So, yeah, I mean, um, you yeah, know, it's horses for courses. I don't really like going for high market cap, so that's the reason I wouldn't go for Internet Computer. But as a technology, it looks good. But my emphasis is without a doubt going for gains rather than technology. I don't give a shit for technology. Oh, circulation is 1.2 billion of Arbitrum. Okay, that sounds a little bit more palatable. I thought so as well. Um, can you look into Casper? Yeah, uh, I'll look into Casper. I'll look into... Three more. Let me have a look. What? How long have I been? One hour 13. I've not been on long. I'll look at a few more shouts from you guys. And then talk about these three cryptocurrencies. Okay. So, um, what was it? Um, Casper. So, Casper's a very interesting one. It's just literally inside the top 100. Again, the volume is not really that special compared to the market cap. I would be expecting kind of about, I'd be expecting at least about 40 million, but this is a bear market. Um, Casper is basically a layer one blockchain. Okay, so it's, it's a lot like, it's, so Casper is... A previous version of Ethereum. So Ethereum had a previous version. When they were looking to migrate to proof of stake back in 2017, 2018. 
Casper was one of the updates. So Casper was uh, a proof of stake protocol that Ethereum was going to utilize to become its proof of stake and become a proof of stake cryptocurrency. It was a part of the milestones in where Ethereum is now. But Casper, as a protocol, then branched off and became its own layer one. And it was offered by CoinList as an IDO. I tried to get in on it. Um, I didn't get in on it. And Casper, I think, idea was about 1.5 cents as, as best price. So it's roughly come fully, fully retraced to its near IDO price. Near. 2.2 cents is the lowest it's ever gotten to. So this is a smart contract ecosystem. A lot like, basically, it's like a version of Ethereum. Um... 100 validators, so it's not not very decentralized. That's quite a low amount of validators. I'd be looking for about a 1,000 for a decently decentralized service. It does the other... Which is the one I just went to? Casper Live. Let me see if there's anything Casper Stats. No. So it's only Casper Live. So I can't see how many accounts, I don't think. Let me see. No, I can't see how many accounts there are. Or, or don't I? Let me have a look. I may have put it in here, but I doubt it. Casper Four found. Um, oh, they had 89,000 when I looked back in probably around about September, I would say. 89, so it's pretty fair to say that it's got over over 100,000 now. 100,000 hodlers. It's not bad. It's not bad, but... Divided by... It's $4,000 per user. So that's around about where it should be because the average oh the average is 1300 per user so actually that's quite overvalued so casper at the top was 4700 so yeah so um it seems relatively overvalued but i can understand kind of why you know they've got good vcs good connections and it's a good technology it's just there's tons of layer ones now so does it stand out? Uh, Centurify, I'll have a quick look at that. So it's five to one ratio. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you can tell me where that's from, I think you're a genius. Uh, you wanna go, you want the AA. No, oh, yeah, I want the AA. Yeah, you want the AA, eh? No, I don't want Alcoholics Anonymous. I want the AA. Oh, you want the AA, eh? <laughs> anyway, Web3 mu Web three based music marketplace ticketing platform. So this is a lot like Bet Protocol, I want to say. And let's have a look and see how Bet Protocol has done. No, Get Protocol. So that's 15 million, and this is the same kind of thing. Yeah, ticketing, solution, blah, blah, blah. And this probably has 14,000 hodlers on ETH. Oops, that's the same. Um, and 1,100 hodlers, so basically 15,000 hodlers. Now let's look at Centaurify, so... Twelve hundred, so it's already fifteen x less. Fifteen hundred, so overall two thousand seven hundred. So it's it's off on par with, but but you know, get protocols probably a lot more established. This is probably a new coin. 
2021 came out just after the last bull market. Four cents. It's gone down just over 10x. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's a dog with fleas. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> Personal. Um, bear with me a sec. Uh, hold on. Big partners with Universal Music. Oh, okay. But it's not for 350k market cap. It's, it's, it's like nearly four times that. Um, it didn't look great. Like it's no, it's no Hello Music. Put, oh, Hello Labs. Put it that way. Uh, Bar twenty X gem. Yada yada yada. Why high conviction on Gala? Well, because Gala is kind of like the market leading games development company. Oh, well done, Viral Shorts. Yes, you were right. It was Family Guy. With the AAA, eh? Uh, what do you think of Ojamu shit? What narrative needs to happen in your opinion to drop BTC? Well, a recession. I mean, that is obvious. By the way, people, if you could, if you're watching, there's 756 amazing people currently watching, which is insane. I've not had this many people watching in years. So if you could just be a beauty mwah, and just smash that like button, just be a darling and do that, then I would be very, 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 very pleased with you. That would be wonderful. Kadena, I've looked at Kadena about a shit ton of times. Can you give me some new ones, people? Give me some new ones. Not ones that I've talked about before and all that good stuff, all that jazz. Super Oracle, is that out yet? I don't think it's out, is it? No, I didn't think so. No, I didn't think that was out. Uh, Super, what is the next Matic? That's tough. Basically, Matic was, in essence, Arbitrum, right? But Arbitrum's going to come out at a ridiculous market cap, regardless of whether it's 10 billion or 1 billion. It's going to come out at a ridiculous market cap. So at this present time, uh, based on current price, it's basically going to come out at a 7 billion market cap. So I would probably say that the, the most likely... Um, Matix would be Immutable X, and that's now 1 billion. So when I invested in it, it I think they had less supply out, and it was about 200, 200 million. Now it's one, 1 billion. So Immutable X... Hmm, mainly Immutable X. I'm sure there was another one I did. Hmm, yeah, I think Immutable X is the only layer two that's decent of that ilk, put it that way. Obviously Optimism, but that's, that's blown away now. So you would need that to come down. But the next, you know, the, the, if you were really wanting the next kind of... Um, scaling solution then boba is probably one of the only ones that is of the optimistic roll-ups and very low in market cap i imagine starknet and zk sync are gonna come out to be mega mega coins just like arbitrum so yeah so there's not really a lot i can tell you on the scaling solutions there's not many that you can oh metis i guess but that's not new anymore. Cartesi and Boba are not new anymore. What you're looking for is new and also a low cap. That's not going to be easy. Um, bear with me. There's a lot of spam. So I'm gonna have to put I'm gonna have to put people in timeout, I'm afraid. Uh yeah, most most new quality projects seem to release at a big cap now. Yes, it's because of the critical mass in crypto 
like everybody everybody kind of gets in on the airdrops you cut they're groomed like it's too obvious now like to me matic was groomed but it had a more fair starting market cap nowadays they're overvalued because everybody just wants to get in on the newest technology which you know if you can get it at a good price like aptos was fair enough but you know now they're all coming out too high and this is why we need a big cleanse and that's why we need this recession to happen which is in my opinion is 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 it's, it's definitely going to happen to me what it boils down to is will it impact crypto and to me it should but there is that potential of it doing i don't think so though because it's priced in the dollar and we've only got this this little narrative that's making people second guess it but to me i'm sticking to my conviction um I'm trying to look through what looks like a decent mark, a decent coin that's not a shit coin. If you want me to look at a shit coin, super chat it. But I'm not going to look at shitty under a million market caps with really crap names. <laughs> Do you see Glimmer going sub below sub 30? Yeah, easy. Super, when recession... I think it's coming soon. I think it's coming soon. I can't say with all certainty, but I think it's coming very soon. Crypto GPT, good one. I haven't looked at that actually since I um, I got involved in Crypto GPT at the beginning. Wow, look at that. 28 mil market cap with 24 mil volume, but it's very, very, it's it's got the potential for very high dilution eventually, but I think that they I think they get vested per month. I'm not sure, but um, I got into crypto GPT and this was a this was 0 0.005, and I think that the high it got to was about 14 cents, which makes it about 28x. Yeah, 14.71. So crypto GPT is pretty cool, um, but we're now outside AI. Where there's no AI uh, narrative now. I think we're just kind of waiting for one of two things to happen. Either this month we have got we've got the FOMC meeting, which is going to be either a raise of twenty five basis points or zit, or or it's going to be frozen. I think the one that has the potential to do the most damage to Bitcoin is the freezing. I think that the 25 basis points brings more pain on the banks and makes Bitcoin look better. Whereas freezing the rate will bring panic everywhere. So freezing might actually be the worst thing to happen. Um, but if, if Bitcoin is made to, if Bitcoin actually goes up on 25 basis points, then AI can make a little bit of a sub comeback, but it will never be like how it was in January. It will just not be that. You know, when ChatGPT was like, just first came to, you know, into inception. So, yeah. So, CryptoGPT is a good play. I like it, but I wouldn't expect any huge upsides yet. But it's a good one to buy, um, especially as it's only a small market cap. I'd wait for it to go lower, personally. Zilliqa is shit and it's old. Harmony shit and it's old. You're appearing on Fyro. I don't really like OG coins. I can't say I really... Oh, Fyro was... A Zen... What was Fyro? Oh, Z coin. That's it. Um... Now, nah, privacy coins, are, they're too much of a of a regulatory risk. The last thing that the SEC is going to want to happen is people being able to obfuscate their, their hodlings or their transactions. So I, I personally wouldn't get into any privacy. I haven't got a single privacy coin, I don't think. You know, Dash, Monero, all that lot. Not interested in the slightest. 
What do you think of Ajix? Ajix is singularity. Yeah, way too high in market cap. And Gala, I obviously love. Oh no, Magic. Magic, I really, really like. And that could have been an easy 2x in a week. So like I said, this is one of my big regrets. When I went to Monaco, um, this went down to... Uh, this went down to $1, just under a dollar, 98 cents, and I missed it. And then it made a run up to $2, so that was stupid. But Magic is basically Gala on Arbitrum. So it's faster, um, more promising, and it's newer. Gala was launched uh, during the last bull market, and Magic was launched after the last bull market. Well, was it? I think it may have just, just fallen inside. No, it didn't. Yeah, November 2021. So it fell just outside the last bull market. So yeah, Magic is a set is a sexual one, in my opinion. I'd make love to this coin. In fact, I'd fuck this coin. That's just how much I like it. So yeah, but just not at this price, but I love it. It's basically, like I said, it's a faster gala, faster, more modern gala. Bit more upside potential, maybe. Uh, you used to love Dash? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did used to love Dash, but, you know, time moves on. If I wanted to get a Dash Master Node, in fact, actually, just a couple of weeks ago, I was actually I was actually thinking about getting a Dash Master Node. So when the Bitcoin thing went down, Dash was about $44, and I was thinking, oh, $44,000, I'd get a Master Node. But I decided not to in the end, because the Dash is kind of antiquated now. Any Glimmer update? No, not really. Nothing's really changed with it. I think I saw another... Oh, no. oh, yeah, by the way, thank you, Paul, for the 10 um, Aussie dollars. Uh, Trias, again. Trias is another one of those older coins. Trias tends to do quite well. It's a little bit like Veracity. Uh, it, it just seems to do well in a bull market. Let me see how many holders it's got. 3,000 plus... So about 13,000, then. 13,000 hodlers, it's not a sexy amount, is it? Considering it's on Binance Smart Chain, like 10,000 addresses is wank for a Binance Smart Chain coin. But I mean, it could probably do well. I'm not that, I don't, I don't, I don't really give a, a shit about it. I wouldn't invest in it. But Trias in the last bull market did pretty well. I would be, I, I think Veracity stands out more as a value proposition than Trias, but if we just have a look, Trias was a good performer, I believe, yeah, here we are, Trias was rank 600, did, no, it did a four, it did a 50x, not that great, to be fair, not that great, but um, yeah, I just don't really care for, I don't think it's got $200, I don't think it's got 200x potential at all. Um, Bonk. <laughs> Bonk's pretty cool. And Bonk's gone down quite a lot from its um, price. But does that mean it's pretty dead, is the question. So, two, two million. That's pretty low for a, a, a meme coin. So, what was the one somebody spoke to me about the other day? Can't remember. Oh yeah, um, Vault. So Vault Inu, 18 million. That's kind of what I would be expecting for Bonk. So this kind of tells me it's died quite a lot. This is a Solana um, meme coin, basically. Mm. <laughs> Brilliant, playful. So yeah, Bonk, Bonk's pretty good. I pr This is a new meme coin, but you know, does it have Shiba potential? Probably not. It could probably do a good 15, 20x. We've been in a recession for six months. No, we haven't. Um, all right, let me have a look. How are we doing for time? 134. So I'll give it five more minutes and then I'll move on to the three coins. So I don't want to take too long. Will you use a rubber? No, I will not. I will I will get it up the duff multiple times. I'll make a football team with it. 
XCAD thoughts, like it a lot. XCAD's a DSO play with heavy backing from top YouTubers, so I like it a lot. Unido dead. Hello, I love. Yeah, I really like that. It doesn't want to come down, which is pretty annoying. So what do you think about 5 Aya? Layer 1 blockchain with good potential. Oh, what if it's not got... It's not on any watch list. Blockchain meets... Build to earn. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I don't really care for something that's not out yet, if I'm honest with you. But I've seen a lot of talk about it. I'm just surprised it's not on any watch list. Nobody has added this to a watch list, which you can do pre-launch. MTV old. Kate coin. This is old one, man. This is an old one. This came out years ago. Well, it came out... Um, it came out uh, up post Shiva. It came out in that whole meme coin season, like April May time, two thousand twenty one. Did a mega horrific pump. I think this is probably seen as one of the few cat meme coins. Yeah, cat themed. But it, it look at look at the look at the website. It's terrible. It is utterly shit. But let's have a look and see how many people are holding it. It's Binance Smart Chain, right? So let me have a guess. Binance Smart Chain, I'll say 230,000 hodlers. 178? Okay, well, I wasn't far off. 178,000 hodlers, it's not bad. That means there's still 178,000 potential marketers whenever there's a, a bull market. I'd be like, buy, okay. like, like, for instance, for instance, you, Danny, you just marketed... You just marketed Capecoin on my stream. So just imagine, there'll be 178,000 of you going on BitBoy, on Elio, on Alex, on, on Cryptos R Us, and all this lot, and uh, and just trying to get them to look at it as well. So that, that's how you've got to think of it. That's, how, that's why I look at hodlers, because these are free marketers, basically. They're the community. And if you look on chain, then you know who's holding it now. And because this was only available, I think, on a decentralized exchange well nearly um then the majority of holders will be on chain but it is old so that's that's what it's got against it um can you check casper i've spoken about casper so many times and then somebody said to me the other day, oh you never talk about casper but i do Casper is like a, a proof of work stroke DAG infrastructure, which is pretty amazing actually. When you combine the the not only the kind of security of proof of work, but also the fact it falls outside of proof of stake SEC monitoring, the Casper is pretty good at that. And it's got DAG infrastructure, which means it operates. I think it's a hundred thousand transactions per second. Very very good. Not on an impressive amount of watch list, but there's there's some room for potential. And you don't really have any idea of the amount of hodlers. Like the explorer says fuck all. It should have a snapshot. Like what you really want is, you know, something like... Sol um, it's probably not going to work now. It's the kind of thing that you want. Maybe not. It doesn't have the amount of accounts, does it? But it does have... Um, TPS and all that jazz. No, this was a shit example. Apologies. So actually what you want is something a little bit more like Algorand, I want to say. Yeah, something a bit more like this. You get it. You know, you know, you know, basically uh, all the metrics here. It's decent. Block speed, transaction cost, accounts. This is this is the shit. This is what you want. Anyway, um, oh, Voxy's optimal buying price. I'd say Voxy's optimal price would probably be about nine cents, maybe. I think I might be pushing it. Nine cents would make it. Well, make it nine million. Yeah, nine million in market cap, pretty much. 
Uh, thoughts on Arb's meme coin, Arbenu? All right, this is the last one I'll look at, and then I will go on to the three coins. So Arb Inu, or Arb Inu. This should do well, to be honest. With with Arbitrum coming out, I'm surprised this hasn't exploded a bit more. Like it's on or around about its all-time high, actually. Yeah, on or about its all-time high. So this would have been a better trade earlier. Um, 4,700 hodlers for a new coin. That's not bad, actually. Considering this is on the, this is, yeah, it's essentially like, um, you know, when you, when you've had to interact with the Arbitrum blockchain, uh, it's a bit of a faff, uh, you know, migrating your, well, sending your tokens over to Arbitrum to then buy tokens. So the fact that they've had to do that and there's 4,700 hodlers is actually not bad at all. There's 1 billion in total supply, but they haven't got a circulating supply, so I can't really accurately measure it. 2,200 watches, that's terrible. But anyway, it's relatively new. Um, that Yeah, it's relatively new. $5, please review Epic Cash. Wimblewimble, blah, 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 blah. All right, I'll have a quick look at Epic Cash now. I'll move on. Epic Cash fourteen thousand. It's it's dead. I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, that's shit volume. Oh, it's proof of work. It's a proof of work currency, but it doesn't appear to have any real strength fundamentally. That's the problem. 3,000, followed by box mining, what? What does he fucking follow, man? He's, this is the second, this is the second day he has, I've seen him following wank coins. Yeah, this is, this is print, this is weak. I would never put money into something like this. Right, okay. I think that's it. I think that is it for, um, ZK Sync, Arb or Aptos. Which one will win? Um, that's a great question, J-Boss. Very good question. I think Sweet Trump's Aptos. And they are layer one blockchains. Then ZK Sync versus Arb, because Arb is optimistic rollups and ZK Sync is ZK rollups, which are arguably sexier. But Arbitrum has already established itself as the like, fourth biggest infrastructure in crypto. So it's between Sui and Arb, then Aptos, then ZK Sync, in my opinion. But it's a very close fight at the top, per that way. ZK Sync um, is one I know the least about, but Sui is definitely amongst the sexiest. So Sui and, and Arbitrum are very hot. But just looking at Arbitrum... What puts me off is it's starting market cap. It's pretty much going to be way too high. And that's not very sexy to me. But I could see Arbitrum going to... So let, let, All right, so just to give a decent... So if this goes to $1 and there is a $1 billion supply, that means that it's... That means it's... Uh, uh, hold on. Yeah, if it's $1 and it's 1 billion in supply, that means it's 1.3 billion in market cap. That's great. I would buy that. 1 billion. It, it will get diluted. I'm not sure over what time scale. But um, at $1, it's pretty, pretty excellent, I would say, because Arbitrum has the potential to go into the hundreds. Let's just have a look at the... chain ranking so arbitrum is third biggest no fourth biggest it's got a third no 2.2 2 or so less than bnb where the fuck is it 
BNB is worth 52 billion. So 2.2, well, 52 divided by 2.2 is probably around about, um, you know, 20, 20 billion. So 20 billion would be its, its, its fair value, I would say. So getting out 1 billion means that's, that's pretty decent. Yeah, that would be, that's, you're basically inheriting a 20x coin. You're inheriting a, a powerful coin for 20x, the, for 20x less the price. So 1 billion would be perfect. I'm not necessarily sure it'll hit that if that is the circulating supply. Um, right. Four years lockup. Oh, cool. Yeah, brilliant. Remember Top Gear with Box Mining Crypto Daily? Yes, I did. Beautiful. Beautiful. I feel a Fed pivot is close to what people, most people think. Yes. And a Fed pivot is typically going to lead to uh, a big crash. Right, okay. So, what are, in my opinion, the top three cryptocurrencies with 100x plus Potential, explosive potential, and meet with, in my opinion anyway, demand for current narratives or future narratives. So I am going to start in number one by looking firstly at HEX. Okay, so HEX is a certificate of deposit DeFi cryptocurrency where you don't lock up your you don't necessarily you don't necessarily uh, lose custody of your coins, locking them up in a DeFi protocol, earning an interest, and that's what's great about Hex. Hex is was ahead of its time, to be fair. Now a lot of people call Hex a scam. Richard Hart was already a very well known YouTuber, and through his influence, through his platform he had on YouTube, Twitter, um, Instagram, he was able to reach people. And say, this is my new cryptocurrency, Hex, right? Now, Hex went on to make a 10,000x. If you had bought Hex in uh, March, or February, actually, should I say, February 2020, you would have made a 2,000x easily, basically. It was worth 0 0.0002 back then. I ended up getting in at 0 0.0003 here in August 2020. So... You would have made a terrific bank with Hex. And one of the key reasons why is because purely of game theory. Okay? It's, it's you know, a load of people were, were able to get Hex through having Bitcoin and taking part in a snapshot all the way back in 2019. Right? And they were able to just get free Hex. And, and people took Richard Hart up on that. And this was a very good way of game theory and growth. So you got a ton of people into it. Now, I personally didn't like Hex at first. I didn't think it was a scam, but I didn't like who was in it, such as Trevon James, right? So I didn't like Hex at first, but that made me miss out on many thousands of Xs, right? So this is a cryptocurrency that I would want to find a cheap alternative to that has the same game theory elements to it that will give it the potential for harsh growth in the future. So if we look at Hex... Hex is presently um, 50, well, I don't think it's 57 billion market cap, but it is ranked 7 officially. So the 57 billion market cap would actually put this on par with BNB. Yeah, BNB. So it's not 57. Rank 7 is 60, well, Hex is 16 billion. So it's, yeah, it would be rank 7. So they've got that wrong on the website. But they've got 541,000 thousand hodlers. So consider this: Hex has done a 16,000 x with 5,000 thousand hodlers, and this has been around since 2018. And it's done 13 price doublings. So what is the cryptocurrency that could do the next Hex? And to me, that is Zen Crypto. Zen Crypto has got the 21st employee of Google as the founder. Consider this. If he was one of the early employees at Google, he saw how they grew and overtook Yahoo, Excite, all of these you know, late 90s search engines. Ask Jeeves. He saw 
how they were able to game the system and become the number one web search and have maintained that for like two decades. That is, that's incredible. He's not just your average Joe who likes cryptocurrency, makes a cryptocurrency. He has actually been at the best ever performing web company. Saw how they grew because he was an early stage employee. Knew personally Sergey Brin and Larry Page. So he has now come into crypto and applied seriously incredible game theory to the extent that there are millions of minters of this. Now, when you go to the Zen website, which I'm not going to do because it's going to try and make me like uh, add my wallet and stuff, which I don't really want to do. But they've got uh, in excess of 40 million people that are staking, that, are, that minted it, but then stake it. So it's like automatic. So you, you kind of mint it, but you, it then automatically goes into a claim, right? Which can last, you know, a year or so. And then after that year, you can then claim your Zen. And it will be, you know, millions of tokens that, you know, really was the cost of a gas fee. So there's, there's millions of people that have minted it and are staking it as a result. Not actively necessarily, but it kind of put, it gets put into an automatic stake. Now, I've done a manual count up of all the hodlers, okay? So this is mainly minted, right? Now, a lot of people were able to mint it and get it straight away. Like, if you were an early stage minter of Zen, you were able to get it straight into your wallet, pretty much, right? So... I did a count up, not only of these four, but I also looked at OKX chain, Phantom, and the Moonbeam chain. And that's not even looking at all of the chains that you can mint Zen on. And I have calculated that there are 238,000 users, considering this is brand new, pretty much. So this came out, I think it was like uh, end of last year, uh, October last year, it's six months old. Six months old versus Hex, which is four years old now. Nearly four years old. Four years old and it's got half the amount of hodlers. So that is just people who have managed to get into their wallet. But there's millions that have minted it. What that means is, is, is that there's going to be about 40 million people after the, the, the staking period that are going to be hodlers of Zen. So they're going to have a huge community that are going to be able, that are going to be marketing Zen in the next bull run. Now, what starts now, so you've got market cap 7 million. Earlier today, it was 6.9. So this has actually gone up a bit. With a volume of 9. So this is, uh, this is exceeding the 5 to 1 ratio. So this is not only 1 to 1, but actually volume actually exceeds market cap, which is pretty insane. Now, because every time somebody mints new, new Zen the circulating supply goes up. And that is why the price keeps going down. Because if we have a look at the cryptos that um, were in my 2022-2023 coins, Zen is, has done a 0 0.4. So when I first did this in January, it was there were five zeros, one, seven, five. Now it's six zeros, 77. So it's lost half its value, basically. And stands to lose more. I would say this will, th there is a potential that when all is said and done, this bear market's over, uh, there's going to be another zero here potentially. Only because it's inflating in the face of time, which is going to continue until the next, you know, until we get a pivot point that the money flow starts to come back. We hit a bottom. So I would be looking to buy Zen Crypto maybe if there's a two here three or a two and just start dollar cost averaging into it because it seems as if it has cut, found a relative floor at five at six zeros and eight so we just have a look in the last month look it's not really like it, it went down to 7067 uh oh mind you having said that, that let's go three months yeah i mean it's relevant relatively sideways but but for most of this actually even last some of last month it's been in the eights and it's not gone it's not gone massively below it. i think the worst it's gone to is there has been a six and i think that was uh, when bitcoin went down to 19.5 but um yeah so i would be looking to get zen later 
But Zen to me is a modern example of Hex. And look at Hex. Hex, before it did a 1938X, was already a 22 million market cap. So it just goes to show you that it's three times the market cap of where Zen is now and still did a 2000X. Now, admittedly, Richard Hart is one of the most... I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not sure respected is the right word. Um, but, you know, you, you, you can't argue the guy knows his shit and could pretty much out-debate most people in cryptocurrency. So, you know, so therefore, he, he is a big personality. So he has carried the Hex brand with a lot of outlandish purchases like the biggest diamond in the world, uh, you know, ad nauseum trips to Louis Vuitton and Gucci and buying bags and all that lot. You know, so he is a he is a fantastic marketer and certainly uh, a, of a different ilk than Jack Levin. I don't think I could even compare the two because Richard Hart, he's he's he is pretty much one of the top top um, personalities in crypto, like it or not. And Jack Levin is you know he. Richard Hart already started off as that. You know, he'd done debates with Roger Ver and um, debates with, with tons of maxis and stuff. He was well known before Hex. Jack Levin isn't and probably will never, ever get to the standard of Richard Hart. So I'm not expecting for... I'm not necessarily expecting for Zen to be in the multiple billions of dollars. But it doesn't need to because it's already starting at 3x less the market cap of Hex before... Uh, a potential trajectory up and in the face of the value going down it could go to a 3 million 2 million market cap which would make it potentially 10x less so i think it's got a, it's got a fantastic trajectory up so i've done the calculation so i can't do it on hex because nothing comes up if i put hex in here so really i've done it based on cardano cardano is roughly the same Roughly the same market cap as Hex, a little bit cheaper than Hex. And this would be a 1769x from current price. So it's got very explosive potential eventually. You know, it will always, do, I think that to an extent there will always be a minting process, but I think that it will have a less inflationary impact on the, uh, on the overall tokenomics eventually. And that's where I could see it doing a big run up. Because you've got to remember, this is a 19% APY coin. Hex is a 38% APY coin. So, in essence, that inflates that in, that gives out more rewards and has to inflate more to pay out its hodlers. So Zen has got maybe that in its favor. Uh, Zen has in its favor. So it's going to be one I invest into eventually. I like it. I consider on a daily basis just buying a bit. I've minted it on all these blockchains anyway. Like, must be about six or seven blockchains I've minted. So I don't think I've minted it on all of them. I've minted it on six or seven blockchains. And I will add to it. Probably put about... I think that overall, moving into the next bull market, I would like to have about $10,000 in this. You know, so $10,000... Times, let's say, a thousand. Ten million. Not bad. Good out. Good, good, good potential reward. It may go nowhere, but good potential reward um, just based on what's done well before and who's in it. And it is, and, and the guy, you know, you can't, you know, the, I would say that his experience trumps most crypto people because he has learned from one of the best companies in the world. Um, right, let me let me uh, get let me just see what you guys say. So, if you had to talk about a currency which is far, far away, off the radar of most experts about cryptos, what would it be in your opinion? Uh, I think that's going to be my next cryptocurrency, which you'll see. Zen has a strong community. Yeah, I agree with that. I would, I agree, and there's a lot of power in community. You know, community is what keeps a coin alive, ultimately. I 
I am minting Zen on Eve, BSC, Moonbeam, Poly Doge Chain, and Polygon. Yeah, you can also mint it on uh, Avalanche, Phantom, OKX Chain, and a few others. Free mint will end in two to three years. Genius is Hex on steroids. I don't think I would go that far. You know, Genius is very much a speculative play. It's a lot like Rex. It's like a very similar certificate of deposit kind of um, coin, but it's got very, very, uh, it's on hardly any watch this, very, very low volume. And uh, the founder is not of the ilk of um, Richard Hart and, and Jack Levin, although he's very experienced. So, um, yeah, so it's definitely under the radar. I would say genius at this point, but I'm not necessarily sure what's going to happen anyway. Any thoughts on XRP? No, nah, not really. I don't really care for it. I think it's the shittest project in cryptocurrency. Um, it obviously, it's, 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 uh, I feel a little bit bad saying it because it's what gave me the money to invest in ethos, which made me the life changing money ultimately. But, um, this was before I really understood it and I don't like XRP at all. So, yeah, I, you'll never, ever find me in support of XRP. I hope they lose the case. I don't like it. I think it should be killed off. Personal opinion. Maybe a bit harsh, but that's how I feel. Um, hello. I started this gangster sh... This motherfucking thanks I get. Hello. Yeah, I like I like Hello. Hello is very good. Just a, not an investable price. Not to me, anyway. It needs to be re, re, retraced massively. Right, okay. In number two, so my number three was Zen Crypto. In number two, we have got Cypherium. So Cypherium, to me, is one of those true outliers. So Cypherium fits within that mould of... Potential CBD, CBDC infrastructure coins. It's fast transaction throughput. It's 10,000 transactions a second. It's six thousandths of a cent transaction cost. So it is a fast transaction blockchain. It's not considered amongst the ISO 20022 cryptocurrencies. And that's why at this present time, it's only a, a mere 34 million market cap. Now, I first covered it uh, when it was 2.3 cents. It's now 3x since then, with not a hell of a lot of volume going into it. Now, why Cypherium? Cypherium because of the trend of CBDCs, okay? So, the Fed is going to be introducing, in around about July, they are going to be introducing FedNow. FedNow is going to be a fast payment system that is a... I suppose, a kind of US-based payment system that's probably going to come into fruition that is essentially a CBDC kind of infrastructure as well. It's going to be for CBDCs, I think, a kind of crypto transactions, but also just fast payment for, you know, government-based activities, basically. So they're going to be launching this in July. And the I would say the, the most outstanding thing about the FedNow service is is that they've actually got as one of their um, as one of their showcase resources that underlies the FedNow service, they have actually got Cypherium as one of their partners, which to me is which to me is mind blowing, because essentially Cypherium is partnered with the Fed. And with FedNow. And FedNow is going to be a nationwide service in America. You know? And Cypherium is the only blockchain amongst this list. I've looked through all of the other companies that are they're, co they're collaborating with for the FedNow Instant Payment Service. And Cypherium's the only one. And Cypherium, therefore, falls into ISO 20022 cryptocurrencies or CBDC infrastructures. So with that, with that link... That, to me, makes Cypherium a fantastic, low-value, risky opportunity, but but high potential. So Cypherium basically carries with it the same properties as XRP. It's got that fast transaction throughput thing. You know, cheap. I didn't catch that. Could you try again? I'll tell you what. 
Why don't you fuck yourself? Right, anyway, so Cypherium basically replicates XRP in terms of fast transaction throughput, low transaction uh, transaction cost. Therefore, making it easy to send large amounts of cryptocurrency for, for hardly any money at all. Now, when you compare that to most banking uh and you know kind of centralized entities that offer payment services it costs a fortune to send money to another country or to send to send large amounts of money to another country to another country's bank so to me cypherium ba basically fits the mold of xrp hashgraph um xdc uh quant and all these other fast transaction blockchains which are considered iso 20022 so but it's removed because while all of these are worth billions of dollars, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, Cypherium is worth tens of millions. So to me, it seems like a decent, it seems like a decent risky speculative play to me, particularly because it's got 662x upside to match to match XRP. That I'm not saying it's going to do 662x, but I'm showing you the range it can travel. In terms of, it's it's acknowledged to be working with the FedNow service. It's the only blockchain. And FedNow is going to be a CBDC service anyway. And Cypherium can underpin it. And part of the reason why people like, you know, Algorand, Hedera, Hashgraph, Quant, uh, XRP, is because of that potential of being a CBDC infrastructure. Where, you know, a country or an entity actually uses one of these blockchains... To facilitate CBDCs as an infrastructure. That's why they're worth billions. Because they've got that ISO 2022 and CBDC appeal. And Cypherium has actually got the government partnership. They've actually got a partnership. There's something of substance there. So that to me says that Cypherium has an outside chance of doing very well. And this is a reason why it's already 3 x since January. Because of speculation. And... Because CBDCs are going to be coming into are going to be coming into fruition soon, and CBDCs are going to replace stablecoins more than likely, and this is why stablecoins are being so heavily regu heavily regulated, scrutinised, attacked, sued, all that lot. Um, because CBDCs is likely to come in and replace them, and Cypherium looks like a very good uh, looks like a, a very good outside chance of moving on up as a result of its partnership with FedNow, and being amongst that class of what is hundreds of millions and billions dollars market cap cryptocurrencies. So that's why I really like Cypherium. And Cypherium's an odd one. There is a part of me that thinks, how trustworthy is this? Because they are on the official website, right? They're on the official uh, explore.fednow.org. Uh, Dot org. So, so th 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 it can't be called a it can't be said that it's a scam um, association because they're actually on the official website. So they are known to them, and it's the only cryptocurrency infrastructure on that website. So by rights, it seems like it's the highest chance of underpinning the technology of a CBDC FedNow service. So that's why I like it. It carries a risk. There's certain things that I don't necessarily like about it. So, for instance, circulating supply is only six percent. Uh, it's not got a large amount of volume considering this this government tie. You know, if we just uh, take a, a quick peek at Algorand, for instance. Uh, Algorand, 74 million and 1 billion, obviously, but that is so widely different, which says to me that people who are in the know, the people who are responsible for grooming cryptocurrencies, the people that, that I know of that that manufacture the success of a cryptocurrency. They know stuff. They know more than you think they know. They will know. And that's what surprises me about this. Because to me, they should know that this is underpinning a service that's going to be coming out in three months. That is a direct Federal Reserve service that's directly nationwide for the US. So it says to me that there's somewhat of an anomaly. But I'm willing to take the chance... I would wait for this. I'm not sure necessarily you're going to get it. It depends on if a recession comes beforehand. This has gone higher, though. This has gone as high as, I want to say, 8 cents. N oh, yeah. This was a year ago. 
So actually, 10 cents. Okay, 10 cents has gone as high as. So it's nearly halved from there. So I'd wait for it to go down a bit more. Probably down to about uh, 3, 4 cents maybe. If it goes that. if it, if I mean, hopefully it could go lower than that. Hopefully it could go retrace fully back to the 2.3. But who knows? You know, who knows if it will ever do that. Because it's got more hodlers now than it had before, certainly. So anyway, that was number two. And that's why I, I like it. So what do you guys think of uh, of Cypherium? I love you, Supo. Go get some mouseworm. <laughs> Cypherium could be doing an XRP-style partnership job. Partner with a big institution and give them tokens. Difficult to say. Thoughts on PYR and Dion? I don't know Dion. Dion? Never heard of that. That's the first I've ever seen of it. Um, let me have a quick look before I go on to number three. Da, 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 Dion. Dion Protocol. 10 million market cap, half a million. So that's 10 to 1 ratio virtually. No, 20 to 1 ratio. 2,200 hodlers up 15% today it's seven months old seven eight months old let's have a look I don't like that already uh, new power in charge power in the crypto revolution with renewable energy inspired by Nibra Sky don't even know what that is we present to you the DN ecosystem DN swap DN blockchain Trade tax. It's not, not very appealing. That sounds like a scam coin when they've got trade tax. Mm. Yeah, it looks pretty shit. It looks pretty shit to me. Um, but PYR I like. Manta. Yeah, Manta. That was one that was a uh, Polkadot parachain, right? Oh, it's not even launched yet. Yeah, Mantra I was looking at uh, a year uh, about a year ago. So I was looking at all the parachains that were scheduled to launch, Moonbeam being one of them, and the other one, Astar. Uh, but Mantra was another one I was looking at. I think it was called something else previously. But this was one of the Polkadot Pol Pol DeFi Alliance coins, which uh, uh, traditionally, anyway, I felt were the elite coins in, in Polkadot. But... Subsequently, RS protocol was in there, and that was a big scam. So, fastest and most decentralized zk layer one for on-chain privacy transactions. That's a that's a very good value proposition because there are not very many zk roll-up technologies in crypto. So, one that is, I imagine, I imagine EVM compatible and Polkadot for Polkadot DApps as well. Is like a ZK Moonbeam, basically. So Moonbeam, so yeah, so Moonbeam is multi-chain, and this because it's on on because it's built in Polkadot. I imagine this is also multi-chain because it's just part of the, you know, it's just part of the the relay chain. So this should be able to this should be able to um, branch with other net bridge with other networks. So, yeah, it does look good. I was, as I said, I was looking at it. I don't know when it's late to come out. Launch of Mentor and Calamari. Calamari is out, isn't it? Calamari is, is the, um, what's it called? The um, Kadena version? Not Kadena. What's it called? Kusama. But this is, look at that. That's shit. ZK hub for Kusama. So considering it's a ZK coin, um, a lot of these Polkadot projects are actually disappointing. So for instance, Akala, a lot of them have been disappointed. None have, none have really done well. Moonbeam has done quite well. The other one has done quite well. Um, a star. Akala hasn't done very well. And this was roughly the same time as Moonbeam. It was like the, the first parachain. So not a lot has really done well out of Polkadot so far. It's a little bit like Cardano. They're not moving very fast unless there is an actual trend that makes them do so. So, But I do like Manta. It does look good. But I don't know anything about... 
So Manta Network, ZK Snart, yada, yada, yada. Um, 100k on Twitter, backed by Binance Polychain. Let me just have a quickie look. Um, yes. Um, Divergence isn't bad. Sky Vision's great. CMS is okay. The rest of them. Spartan's alright. Not amazing. Polychain's excellent. <laughs> Alameda. Three arrows. That won't have helped. And neither Defiance, because Defiance was part of Three Arrows Capital. But uh, Polychain's excellent. Did you say... Oh yeah, Binance. Although it's not on here. So... ICO was... I don't really know what's going on with this token, though. Yeah. So, I mean, it looks okay. It looks good, actually. It looks... looks, looks I mean, on the face of it, it looks good. Um, why doesn't it have its Twitter on here? That's surprising. Okay... Let him get to the number one coin. It's late in the UK. Oh, it is a bit, actually. Oh, wait a minute. How long have I been on now? Ah, oh, whoops. I've been on quite a long time. I don't really want to have long live streams, but oh, this is that's more of a Twitch thing. All right. So in at number one would be Magical AI. Okay. Now, Magical AI, this is, go this is not yet released. All right. This is, this is coming out via AIPad. Now, Magical AI is basically a way of using AI to create images, right? So it's a lot like um, uh, Image AI. It's a lot like this product by Binance, which is their Generate an AI profile. And essentially what you do in Magical is you can create an entire NFT collection. Let's say you wanted to create a Team Supo NFT collection and you got like Ineas face, uh, Patrick's face, uh, Lawrence's face, Rita's face, Angie's face, Chrissy's face, any of your guys' faces. And then you you put it in there, you create a, a kind of with a with a with a particular theme, so it all looks in unison, all looks uniform, and you can create a team supo. I could create a team supo NFT collection. The amount of people that have said to me, Superman, I can make you an NFT collection, I can make you an NFT. Blah, blah blah. I'll host your NFT. I'll I'll take I'll take a hundred thousand dollars from you to do it at the same time. Um, all of that. This allows you to just do it. Pretty much, it allows you to do it on your own with no well, unless with the tokens, but with no actual outlay. You can create an NFT collection. You can create and host it on your own website. You can create it and you can put it on OpenSea or Magic Eden or any of those. You can have it on multi chain. All of that can be created with this, okay? So the fact that Binance have created this AI you know, profile picture maker, and this is just this is just for a profile picture, this is not to make an entire collection, right? Shows you the attraction of using AI to produce images. It's, it's a really good tech. I love the idea of it. I love the idea of basically just not having to use an NFT designer to create my NFT images and, and, and potentially you know, monetize my ideas. Monetize my ideas. It's a great idea. But the fact, but what makes this most appealing is the fact that this is going to be a 16,000 market cap. Fully diluted, 250, but that won't realize it's fully diluted market cap for a while. Now, do I think this is going to be around for three years, four years? No, not necessarily. You know, this is part of the you know, it's like there's the residue of the AI, uh, the AI narrative still going on. Okay, so, you know, Ocean's not really gone down. Singularity and Fetch AI, they haven't really gone down. The interest is still there for AI. So there's still the remnants of, and Crypto GPT did a 20x. So it shows you that, well, it did more than a 20x, it did a 30x. So it did a 30x, despite releasing outside of the uh, AI season, and it was a 300k market cap on launch. 
This is 16K. Admittedly, if this came out two months ago, this would have been probably a, a 300X. Alas, it's launching now when we're in a state of uncertainty. There is slight greed, but there's also uncertainty regarding altcoins. So, you know, is this going to truly do incredibly? Perhaps not incredibly, but I still foresee some great upside from a 16K market cap. If we just have a quick look at Image AI. It's a 9 million market cap. Five hundred and sixty two X for a coin that no one talks about. It's got fantastic upside potential. Now, this is going to be launching on the 28th of March. So in around about a week's time, this is going to be launching via AI pad. It's going to be their first. and I think it's exclusive. Uh, for exclusive launch. Their, AI pad are also going to be launching uh, based GPT, which is based on Elon Musk's tweet. But this actually, and, G and base GPT is going to be a ZK layer 2 blockchain. It's a little bit like crypto GPT in all honesty. But this one I like because it's a very low market cap. It's an AI play and you'll probably be able to make a decent return if, you're, if you are uh, you know, on the AI pad launch pad which a lot of you will know about via my videos anyway. So I like this. I, I like the value proposition. It's a DAP. It's not an infrastructure. It's nothing huge. But, you know, it, it, is, it, is a, it is a value proposition you would use. You know, I've known of ver various people that... There's loads of people. Celebrities, uh, influen influencers... Um, and, and artists that launch NFTs. Like, this offers a kind of no barrier to entry way to launch an NFT collection. That, to me, is what makes it pretty fantastic. You know, because if, if, let's say my, let's say anybody can launch it. Anybody. Like, let's say my sister. My sister's a dentist, right? If she wanted to have a bit of fun with her, because she, she like, essentially runs a practice, dental practice. She wants to have some fun with her stuff and create like an NFT image for them. That, that's cool. Anybody can create it. Anybody can anybody can monetize their ideas with this using AI. And that's the, one of the great, great parts about AI is that it just makes it easy to do certain stuff. So, yeah, so I like it. I think that, you know, it's it's not going to it's not going to take the crypto world by storm. But on a 16K market cap, it's got a lot of upside potential. Particularly when you look at one of its closest competitors, which is this, Image, AI, Image Generation AI, which did a 200x. Granted, it did it during the actual, you know, d during the peak of the narrative of AI. But it shows you the concept is liked. And there is a project with the exact same concept that's already $10 million. So anyway, there we are, people. There we are. Marble Arch. So now everybody's going to start uh, dropping off and going to bed. So anyway, so I will um, take a couple more questions. I don't really want to make this much longer. Probably like five minutes at most. Maybe Moonbee will do well, but not so far. Well, it, it's a lot to do with the ecosystem it's part of. You know, it's... Uh, it's it's. For instance, Aptos, Sui... Optimism, Arbitrum, they're all the stars of their own show. Okay, they're the stars. Yeah, they they create their particular ecosystem. Arbitrum is the head of the Arbitrum ecosystem. Aptos, the head of the Aptos ecosystem. Moonbeam is not the head of the Polkadot ecosystem. That's the issue, right? So Polkadot, when Polkadot does well, and the technology that Polkadot as a... Polkadot as a relay chain offers to all of its layer ones is the ability for multi-chain, is a consensus algorithm that's fast, is security. And then it sits as the kind of pathway for multi-chain uh, of various different various different blockchains can connect to it and all and and can offer a DAP multiple avenues of revenue. But it's not the star of its own show, and that's that is what the problem. It's the star of Polkadot Show.
But it is the star of Polka Dot Show. That a star isn't, Moonbeam is. And that is a good that is a good thing. But it is responsible for its, you know, potential um slowness in terms of moving. We think it'd be pro shit. Thoughts on Nier, excellent. I love Nier. It's definitely one of the ones that I have acquired the most of so far. Do you think the Arbitrum narrative will pump? It depends on the market. You know, you've got to remember, it's going to be flying in the face of, of this. You know, cryptos are associated with... Cryptos are a risk on asset like stocks. Okay, they're priced in the dollar. They're risky assets. And if stocks go down... If billions of dollars is worth, worth lost in stocks, then the same is going to be lost in cryptos. There's no getting away from it. So it all depends on the narrative it comes out into. But, um, you know, everything, look, uh, the NASDAQ, there's this, there's this support area. There's two support areas for the NASDAQ. There's one on the bottom here and there's one on the top. So it, it, I believe it's going to break through both when a recession is announced. The same for the S&P, the same for the Dow Jones. And if we look at Bitcoin, this one is going to definitely break through this key support area. Or well, mainly it was 17. So it's, it's definitely going to break through, well, arguably both of those. Both that and the 15k. So, it depends. I I am actually excited by the fact that Arbitrum is going to be coming out very, very shortly. Because that means that it could be heavily impacted by a pivot, which will lead to a recession, which will lead to all risk on assets plummeting. And Arbitrum actually could be the absolute best time to get it. So that's why I'm not buying any Arbitrum when it first comes out. Because I want to make sure. Because I may be able to get Arbitrum uh, on account of it absolutely plummeting. Jerry, glad, glad you were here. Very glad you were here. By the way, people. Um, just to let you know, Jerry Banfield Crypto. Uh, this channel is excellent. All right. So um, make sure you watch. Uh, it's It's... Jer Jerry is very entertaining to watch. He also analyzes uh, cryptocurrencies too, like in, in a similar way to how I do. So if you want an extension, essentially, of this channel, go see Jerry. Um, why don't... Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked. Why don't you already have the uh, ARB from the Edward? I haven't looked because I don't want to connect my wallet. I'm just happy with them just chucking it into my wallet uh, come the airdrop. I don't need to look. I don't I don't want to lose my funds because I've got a lot of money in funds. And just making making the wrong decision on one occasion can cost you dear. So I just don't I don't like to. Uh, obviously paid you <laughs> I've known of Jerry for many years. Um Would it be smarter to buy into coins in the RB ecosystem? Yeah. Yeah, it would, but of course, um, a lot of them already done, a lot of the most significant ones have already done their run. So a, a GMX has, um, Arbinu is is uh, is all time high, um, Magic. That's a, that, this actually really pains me every time I look at it, because look at that market cap and volume. Basically, the, Magic is yeah, it's Magic and. My my cat was called Magic. You'll remember if you were watching on Twitch. My cat passed away in, uh, on the 2nd of December. And that was the first time I saw Magic, this cryptocurrency, come up on here. And I was like, oh, Magic. I should buy this. But it was $1.40 at the time. And I was like, no, I'm not going to buy it. But then when it went down to 98 cents, I was like, oh, I want to buy this. I couldn't. And, uh, and I regret it now because it would have been an easy 2x. But, you know, there we are, Marble Arch. Mm, don't worry, you'll get magic below those two sets. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I was hoping to get into it because I got hurt by USDC. And uh, I was looking to uh, revenge trade USDC, basically, by getting into a cryptocurrency. And magic was the one. It was magic and avalanche. I was also considering that. Let's have a look and see how avalanche did. Avalanche hardly fucking moved, to be honest. So I was going to get into avalanche. It was about $15.99. So it hardly moved. So magic would have definitely been the better one. 
Uh, right, I better go now. I better go. So thank you very much, people, for being here. I hope you love this stream. And let me know in the comments after, do you prefer the live streams or do you prefer the pre-recorded, 10-minute, easily consumable videos, etc.? I can do either. Um, also, I'll tell you this, and this is this is very interesting, actually, which is that um, my shorts, eat my shorts, look at my, my shorts, man, 40k views, that's immense. So I'm thinking of doing more, more of these shorts, because they really work. I mean, and I've looked at the subscriber conversion, it's actually not bad at all. So, you know, you'll, you'll see I've gained about 5,000 subscribers in the last month and a bit. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to plan to do shorts as well. But, yeah, let me know which you prefer, the shorts, the live streams, or the pre-recordeds. Uh, keen for your for your thoughts. And anyway, yes, and I shall see you of the next time, people. I love you. You're amazing. You're Team Supo, and you're the greatest, to be fair. And I shall see you the next time. It's lights out. Fall out.